So we've got our radio connection, we have our motor connection. The only thing remaining is our main flight battery. So um, always power up your transmitter before you um, energize your receiver. And now in this case, for bench testing, uh, I've removed the propeller off of this motor. I don't want to have a prop spinning up and, and uh, slicing my fingers in shreds or anything. So it's connected through the ESC. It's connected to my AR6100 receiver. And I'm going to control it with a Spectrum DX7 transmitter. So as I turn on my transmitter, I had the correct model selected. In this case, I had actually used it for a test on the Sukhoi. So I have my model selected, and I've already bound my receiver. This isn't, we're not going to go over binding procedures. They're different for each radio manufacturer. But I've already bound this AR61 receiver uh, to this model memory in the, the, the Spectrum DX7. So I'm already ready to go there. So now all I have to do is connect my flight battery. And there it's armed. So it took a few seconds for the transmitter to find the receiver, the receiver to find the transmitter, those two to sync up their channels. As soon as they did, you heard the triple tone um, uh, off of the, uh, off of the uh, brushless DC motor. Now the ESC is going to send out some different indication tones. Let's go ahead and listen to those again. We'll disconnect the flight battery. We'll reconnect. That first triple count is how many cells were actually connected or how many cells it's configured for. So and that the two rising tones show that it's actually armed or indicate that the battery is actually armed. So the first tones tell me that the ESC has been programmed for a three cell configuration, which is exactly what I have. This 3S indicator on the battery is telling me that I have um, uh, three batteries in um, series, which give it uh, 3.7 times three, which would be my 11.1 .1 volt pack. Very important when you arm your ESCs, make sure you can hear, you hear the proper indication for the number of cells that you that are in series because you may be, uh, I can very easily change the configuration of this Phoenix 25 to be set up for a two cell pack which is 7.4 volts. Uh, likewise I can also leave it set for three cells which is 11.1 .1 volts and actually be running a 7.4 volt setup off of it in which case I'll get constant cutoff. My, my ESC will constantly be going into cutoff because it's looking for 11.1 .1 volts when in fact it's only being supplied with 7.4. So you'll get it to start to roll, the, the motor will start to turn, and then it'll immediately go into cutoff. So always verify that that first series of tones uh, indicates your number of cells that are connected on, on most uh, ESCs. Always read the manufacturer's directions to understand how your tones are indicating the setup procedures. But now we have it bound, it's ready to go. Uh, the receiver's light is solid, which shows that it's active and talking to the transmitter, and our throttle channel should be active. And there it is, our motor's spinning up. So you never want to dry run your, your brushless motors extensively on the bench. There's just no benefit to it. Just verify that you have a little bit of activity and you have some throttle response and you're all set. So that's a basic connection. Let's go ahead and take a look at another motor. Uh, we'll power everything down. Disconnect your flight battery first so the whole system's dead. Turn off your transmitter. Let's go ahead and check out another motor. We have a, a, a Hacker uh, E-Flight co-branded motor here. It was, it was sold under the E-Series the e um, um, motors uh, for from e-flight but it's actually a hacker brushless motor now the hacker motor if you notice the out the outbound wires they have no color indication it's just uh, three black wires so we have no idea uh, which one is uh, is tied to which phase but again it doesn't matter our ESCs are able to understand once we connect them uh, and, and as soon as it applies power the uh, back EMF reads the direction of the, um, of the motor and understands that it's turning in, in one direction or another. So being a three-phase or multi-phase motor, it doesn't care which one's uh, connected in which sequence. It'll automatically pick up and drive the motor just fine. So um, in this case, I, I installed this hacker motor in a, in a ducted fan unit. I need to extend the leads to get it up through the airframe. So I just grabbed three wires of, of ample gauge. Always make sure you meet or exceed the gauge of the motor wire with any, any soldered uh, wires that you add, add into the radio system. You never want to put a lesser gauge wire on there. It won't be able to handle the current draw. It can get a result in an overheat condition. It can burn. It can, it can catch fire. There's a lot of things that can happen if you run with too small a gauge wire. So check the tools section of our website at uh, www.2bfly.com and there's a wire gauge indicator which will tell you how many amps uh, the different uh, wire gauge sizes can handle. So 
it's always good to be safe and in, in, in worst case you can go with a larger wire at the expense of a little more weight in your model but you know you'll be able to handle the current and they're all going to whatever you're connecting to so we have a, a random green white and black uh, wire that I connected to these three unknown phases that are black I'll go ahead and connect those into my to my electronic speed controller. These connectors are usually very stiff and difficult to get out but that's why reversing the ESC sometimes is highly beneficial because you don't have to dig through the model and unplug those wires. We'll go ahead and connect our hacker motor, make sure everything's unplugged. And I'm just going to connect them in any old series. I'll stick the green one to the red, the white to the black, and the black to the white. This is going to hurt a thing. Now I'm going to do something you normally don't want to do, uh, but I'll be very careful with my throttle management. I'm going to go ahead and leave a prop on this so I can determine the direction. And also I want to show you what happens as you begin to draw some amperage through the battery. Now I've left this, this EVO battery close to minimum charge, so uh, we're going to be able to, to, to step into its, um, its uh, cutoff threshold for the LXS21 to show that we're re reaching a low battery power uh, status. So uh, that'll be a little thing, uh, an additional uh, indication we'll get off of this test. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the Futaba receiver. Now Futaba handles things a little differently. Most of your ESCs you buy are not going to be keyed. The, the um, three pin connector is not going to be keyed. It's going to be a Z style like this. So when you, when you pick up your Futaba receiver, uh, it also doesn't indicate clearly on the front the throttle uh, channel. So um, in most cases, and always verify, uh, unless settings have been changed in your transmitter, channel three is going to be your throttle setting. You can always check the trim uh, indication on the front of the transmitter just to verify. Typically, Futaba will identify the channel by the, the T channel by a, a, with a number. So the trim for the throttle channel uh, happens to be tied to channel number three, so that's an additional indication. If we look at our 8FG here, um, we see that T3 is up and down on this quadrant, this gimbal, which would indicate our throttle setting. One more note on the Futaba configuration. Very commonly uh, with electronic speed controls, you need to reverse this throttle channel. So you go into the settings on your radio, depending on which one you have, and reverse that throttle channel. It's, it's normally set to normal, reverse it, or it will not arm the ESC. And what happens is every time you raise that throttle channel, uh, after you've connected your flight battery, you don't hear the indication tones, you raise that channel up, it'll go into a setup mode. It's called stick programming. And now you're making changes on the ESC's programming that are unintentional, and you can get yourself down a, 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 in a difficult situation very quickly if you don't know what you've changed where. And stick programming on an ESC is not fun. It's, it's always uh, it's kind of a hunt and peck. You have to follow the directions, listen to the tones, and, and uh, um, try to go through each of the settings very carefully. So. Verify. Um, you don't want to reverse right off the bat, but if you if you fire up the the uh, your power plant, you've connected your main battery, you've initialized your radio, and you're not hearing the arming beeps, I would go in and try to reverse your throttle channel on a Futaba radio first. Leave the throttle set to zero, reconnect the system, and you may get the arming beeps you're looking for. In which case, you're ready to go.